All right, y'all, before we get into this episode, we just wanted to take a brief minute to share a big announcement with you. So on Saturday, February 24th, we will be hosting our very first live event. There'll be a DJ set from John Morrison, live performances from Oliver Rothstein and Logi. Plus, we'll be hosting a discussion about Freeway's debut album, Philadelphia Freeway. The kind of thing that you've come to love us for on the podcast, only this time it's all going down live in person at Attic Brewing Company here in Philadelphia. Saturday, February 24th, 8 p.m., $10 cover at the door. $10. When's the last time you paid $10 to go to a show? So come have a beer with us, hear some dope music, and reminisce over a classic Philly album. Okay, hope to see you there. Now let's get into this new episode. I'm E. I'm Rob. I'm J Words. I'm Masai. Welcome to the next movement, folks. They wanted in one, two, three. They don't want the four, five, six. It ain't fun to be in an era shifting. Takes a lot of heavy lifting. Could give you all the descriptions to get it in. But you can't just stick the tip in if you really want to fuck the system. You can't get around it. Gotta speak to your old noise. So it could die with a sound mind or it'll have you surrounded. Static from all angles. It ain't a cute thing when it saturates your brain juice. When the foundation is liquid, shit might just shake you up. Now you blend it with the mess easy. So I try to keep it steezy. Believe me, I've been at it for a minute though. Takes a second to register. Three weeks to form a habit, but years to get it slow. Finish for a far distance to a listless destination. Couldn't pin it and send it to yourself. If you didn't send it to yourself, the place you headed is damnation. That's where you get hurt. J words, Masai, aka Air. Thank y'all for coming through. I really appreciate this. Yes. Thanks for having us. Yes. Yeah, of course, of course. It's an honor. So I think we want to immediately dive into Headspace, your newest project. Y'all dropped this at the end of 2023 in November, I believe. And what I immediately appreciated about this project is that it really lifts your individuality as artists, but it also highlights your strengths as a duo. And I would imagine that that allows listeners to really get a sense of who you are when they engage with this project. Do you feel like striking and maintaining that balance is always part of the goal when you work together? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I think when we created AIR, we wanted to like fuse what we do separately, but do it together, you know? So, um, you know, I think uh, moving forward, I think, uh, yeah, we're trying to just keep being ourselves, but work together what do you have to say about it Masa? um i agree with that i think that was a great way to great way to sum it up <laughs> yeah because <laughs> when we first met we were like i was really into what Masai was doing and Masai was into what i was doing so we we're like yeah we have to just work together being ourselves you know well i love headspace i love the genre bendy sound i love Masai as an mc but i also love that you're singing on this album the only problem, and we'll, we'll talk more about the singing in a bit, I'm sure, but the only problem I have with it is that it's too short. Like, even though it's 14 tracks, I think only one of them is over the like, two and a half minute mark. Um, it just left me wanting more, which is not a bad thing, I guess. Was yeah. it an intentional decision to like keep the song legs on the short side? Mm -hmm. I think that it's what like naturally happens. Also, some we cut some songs at the end. You know, sometimes everything does it make it to the final product? I don't even really like to call shit music like a product, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I personally love that. Like I love when people feel like it was too short mm -hmm. and like they want more. Cause I just feel like that's a great way to leave people mm -hmm. instead of doing too much, like short and concise and sweet is like, yeah, leaving, leaving people at the cliffhanger is, the best way to even like to the end of a series, you know, like, yeah, the that's thing. how you keep watching. That's true. Yeah. I, I didn't even, I couldn't even imagine these songs being longer than they are actually like, especially that the way that he, like music is now like, you know, little Uzi drop that one minute and 50 second song, you know, and it's like a banger. And you know, I don't think, uh, I don't know, four, four minute songs just seem like a stress. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the short songs are not unusual, right, for the times. Like, that's that's something that's been happening for a while now. I just yeah. was, I just remember the first time I listened to it being like, oh, man, I was just getting into that beat, and now it's gone, and I got to <laughs> no, press rewind. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine keeping these songs on the short side means having to find a way to kind of deliver the message in the most concise way possible, 
there are several moments where I hear Masai really doing this well. Like some of the ones that come to mind are on static when you say, now you got to dig yourself out of the hole of the moment. Our biggest opponent is in the mirror. I don't give nobody else the credit. Or on reflection, when you say, question what I know to be true, the trauma be living for you. Sometimes dictate what you do, pull all the strings like a puppet. Um, I just feel like you're saying a lot while actually saying very little. And I wondered about the process that you go through to achieve this. Yeah, um, I guess that's an interesting question because I guess that is just stylistically like my my thing, um, like saying a lot, but but like in a minimalist kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, stylistically, I'm just drawn to that type of communication when it comes to raps. I think that especially on uh, Jay Word's beat. There's this quality because I think the record is really dancey um, and it feels good and upbeat. And so I think that maintaining that overall like smooth, like kind of minimalist essence on it, like uh, just like feels right mm. to the production. But it is headspace. Like the, the concept is still about these like deep, you know, introspective life lessons and like growth and like us coming into adulthood really coming into womanhood for ourselves and yeah all those things so just like that balance overall i feel like rob like sort of got to this in his last question but masai you're doing a lot of reflecting on so many different things on this project and it feels like in doing that you have a clear direction of how you want and hope to move in the world and I'm assuming that the credit here goes to the growth that you've experienced over the years. In Train of Thought, you say the meaning of life is past self, which is so true. I'm wondering if you feel like getting to this place is what has helped you to find the expectations you have for the people around you, both within your immediate circles and outside of this. Yeah, definitely. I think that like when we were making this album, Jen and I were both going through a lot of things in our personal lives. And so... It's interesting because it's like, you know, obviously as friends, because we're we're friends, <laughs> like we would link up and like discuss these things. And we were both going through, I think, like major like tr life transitions um, and just like learning about like the people that we wanted to be, the people who we wanted to be around, how we just wanted to conduct ourselves through the world, through music, like all of those things. So I think that this album just kind of like reflected all of those all of those things yeah so we're talking about like the things going on in your lives as you were making this project so i'm gonna go off on a tangent because um, i'm into psychology that's kind of my thing so uh just a <laughs> disclaimer um there's something about this project that feels very insular like the two of you are really in your own world but at the same time uh we're very much getting a glimpse into your heads in the Bandcamp description of the project it says Headspace notes a new stage of adulthood for the duo, coming to terms with a new understanding of who they are and exploring how they want to interact with the world, sort of what you were just saying, Masai. So it made me think of intimacy versus isolation. It's a stage of development theorized by somebody named Eric Erickson in which there is conflict between the desire to form intimate relationships through acts of vulnerability and isolation where fear of past experiences leads to alienation and exclusion. It really sounds like you're giving voice to this conflict on Headspace. The production sounds both otherworldly, but is also unifying in its rhythm. The lyrics at times directly deal with intimacy versus isolation. So questions, were y'all aware at all of Eric Erickson's stage of intimacy versus isolation? Mm, no. <laughs> no. but this is so cool because i feel like this is the third time that somebody has brought up some like psychology shit like <laughs> just like schooled us on something like we've been in other we've had other like interviews where things like this have come up so that's also been really cool and i like that the album is like giving that energy for yeah, people for like, sure. yeah. but yeah didn't know about that but sounds yeah. very valid yeah, I think especially at the age that we are, you know, we're both in our like late 20s. And, um, you know, I think in this stage, we just going through a lot of growth, a lot of realization. And I think we're heading towards the right 
way not the right way of living i guess there's no right way but a way of living to make ourselves happy you know and actually enjoy a life you know yeah for sure yeah we're both air signs too so we like to overthink and think a lot and like analyze things and talk about our analyzed thoughts <laughs> And it's funny because when Masai was writing these lyrics and showed me the songs, it's like, damn, I was just going through this. Like, mm. it was just, you know, so a lot of the conversations that we were having were a part of the album, too, you know. Yeah. For what it's worth, um, you are in the age range that Erickson theorizes people go through this stage. So wow. Yeah, you're, on, you're on track. Wow, see? On track. I'm aligned, even. <laughs> Divine timing. <laughs> I'm wondering what you desire for listeners to take away from hearing you give voice to this this stage of development that you're in i mean just be okay with change and growth you know mm. every year it feels like in your late 20s like it feels like the next year is so drastically different from the last year you know because so much change happened within just one year or a couple months you know um so you know just be okay with change things are gonna change so fast That's facts also i would say um just like just like love up on yourself and like don't like quiet the noise like around you and just like be in your own in your own vibe in your own headspace like that too just like i don't know i feel like too like when you get older you just get more comfortable with being and you you know yourself more and um just like leaning into that energy yeah. i think it's a big theme in the album i'm in the middle of reading um parable of the sower right now for the first time mm -hmm. god has changed j words like you're saying change is something we have to accept all right one one more question as related to eric erickson uh, in his model for developmental growth he suggested like people need to complete one stage before entering another so mm -hmm. do you think you've completed the stage that you're that you're addressing on this project or do you think it's more of an ongoing question of like who you are and how you interact with the world? Mm. I feel like um, me personally, um, when we were done with the album, I started going through those major changes a lot last year, you know? And then like when with releasing the album and doing a campaign or whatever, like life just started changing a lot. It was way different than it was the beginning of the year, you know? So yeah, I don't even know what's going to happen next, but I'm okay with it now, you know? I'm just going through it. <laughs> whatever life brings yeah same for me like after we finished recording the album went through major transitions in my life and I think definitely it's still it's still happening like still coming into being and like expanding into being comfortable with expanding into everything that I am and like not being not silencing myself or being like scared of my power and like all of those things so definitely still like still learning and i don't think that i mean i don't know what the the next phase is according to what is it eric eric erickson yeah eric erickson yeah. oh wow such a what a name but <laughs> um <laughs> right but i do feel like we never really stop i don't ever want to stop growing or learning and being a student and you know having these existential realizations about Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Always, I, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Jay Wars. No, I was just gonna say it's always fun to be uncomfortable, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm a little bit older than y'all and I, I really feel what you're saying. Like it's it's a constant it's a constant process. Like there are things that I am just now learning as a forty year old. So I yeah, I really feel that sentiment. Well, I wanted to talk about the the project's production for a little bit. J words, I'm wondering what the process was like for you when you were constructing the sound on Headspace. Considering Masai's lyrical approach on this project, do you feel like you intentionally set out to create this foundation of sound that would match the energy that she's putting out and also give you the space to do a little bit of reflecting through the album's sonic framework? Um, when I was, I guess, um, the album went through like three periods of different beats stages that I was in so I guess like the first five songs um I made all those beats in like 2020 which is pretty crazy you know it's like oh, wow. a long time from now yeah so that was made um I was in a different headspace back then you know I was mm. just doing 
whatever nah I wasn't doing whatever I was just like I, I felt like I was being a little bit more free with my sound you know just careless unorthodox more you know um when it came to like let's say shadow self and um rotation even train of thought was like I made that like last year like the ending of last year so that's a little bit more recent production wise um and um the one with Kole Chris, Dan Dan Baby and Static were like made like last year during the fall so yeah uh, I would say like it was just different places I was in in my life um I made the sounds you know um I feel like it all came together in the end luckily you know but yeah it was a lot of just different gears that I've used to construct the sound so hmm. I hear a lot of different genres on this project. So I hear house, industrial, drill, et cetera. Did it feel like when you were crafting these different beats that you were channeling specific influences? Maybe. I don't know. Probably. from the Because, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so specifically when I send Messiah beats, I usually send her, like, my favorite beat that I made out of a bunch of beats that I've made at that mm -hmm. time period. So let's say with Backwards, that was the first song we ever recorded. And that was the first beat that I was like, all right, look, I made this beat. I think you'll love this beat. And she did. We recorded it in, like, 15. She wrote lyrics to it in, like, 15 minutes. It was, like, mm. meant to be, you know. And from that, from doing that song, we knew that we wanted to write more. And I also know that, like, Masai likes gritty bass and, like, you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, yeah. I send her, like, stuff that I know she'll enjoy getting on, you know, that will get her excited. So, and it gets me excited because I think I send her, yeah, all my favorite beats. So, yeah, that's how I guess I go when I send my, like, Masai beats or anybody beats. I'll send them, like, what I think they'll enjoy most, you know, from my production. Because I do yeah. do a lot of different styles, so... I don't know if that explains anything, but yeah, no, it does. It does. <laughs> I feel like that's how my brain works, but. <laughs> yeah. mentioned Masai singing I feel like this may have come up Masai last time we had you on the show which was which feels like a long time ago but it was after um with the shifts was, re was released and I think you may have shared then that folks have encouraged you to sing more so I'm wondering what led to the decision to sing at certain points on this project we decided that oh I'm sorry I'm, not, I'm about to answer no, for you. no no go no, ahead we, I was about we, to be like wait what did I don't even know I feel like we both said like we wanted Velocity to have more singing, but then um we we're like, fuck it, let's do more singing mm. on this project, you know. Okay, yeah, I do remember that conversation. Um, yeah, I'm leaning into it. Hey, we ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I love it. Thank you. Does singing give you something that rhyming doesn't? Um, definitely. I think well, for one, I think singing is a lot more instinctual for me, actually, um, because, like, I grew up singing, like, I grew up in church, like, in the choir, and, like, I'm really an R&B girly down. Like, I think that people don't realize that about me, but, like, if you if you see most of my playlists or, like, what I'm listening to on a regular basis, a lot of it is, like, R&B music, um, neo-soul, like fusion whatever type music um so i think it comes really quickly to me and if i hear a beat a lot of the times i will hear like a melody or something first so it is really it, it's a it's a really like almost like a really primitive release hmm. if that makes sense with singing mm -hmm. it does and with rapping i just get this like burst of like 
what's it called when you um really adrenaline there we go yeah it's a lot of adrenaline with rapping I just mm. it, like feeds my ego honestly <laughs> yeah. I love that so there's two features on Headspace one from Samira Truth and the other one from Quelle Chris and I love them both how did they become part of the project and what led to the decision to only have two guest features on Headspace well, the song with Samira, um, that was made in 2021. Um, okay. And it was in this bash of beats that I sent Masai, like Reflection was on that bash and Big Bang too. And mm -hmm. Samira and Masai were hanging out and they had a folder of beats that I sent and they just got on it. And from the day I heard that beat, I heard it the same day they recorded it, luckily. And it was the first time I ever met Samira too. Um, I was like, damn, the song's fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm like, we should add this to the album. Right. Yeah, it had been pretty naturally um, ex with Samira. Like, it was super like, I was like, yeah, I'm trying to link. We need to make some music. And then Samira felt really called to the, the um, J Words beat, um, that beat for Glass Ceiling. And we were like, yeah, what are we going to write about? And we were just like, let's just talk our shit. And yeah, it was really fun to make that um yeah and like I feel like it's a really great addition to the album Samira's voice like cuts through so mm -hmm. well in yes. general yeah I agree yeah and then um with Quelle, we were like thinking we did want like we did want like a a, a male voice on the project a masculine um, energy or perspective yeah. um and we wanted to see because I feel like no shade. Do I need to do I need a shade? Okay. <laughs> do it. Do it. Yeah, talk your shit. <laughs> I feel like no, but I, I do feel like so J Red's beats are like really challenging. And I I don't know. I just feel like femme rappers, woman rappers, like non cis male rappers, we're just like so creative and like mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like it takes a particular level of creativity to like get on production like the type of production that J Words makes um so I don't know I'm always I guess just feeling like yeah like what what man will like get on this and like right. really go wild but of course Quelle is like I don't know like a OG and just amazing and so smooth and like so he smooth. executed as well as we yeah. would have expected yeah. yeah it's so yeah. crazy sending somebody a song and not knowing how like what they're gonna do like like what if it's ass like you know what i mean like i'd be thinking that like <laughs> damn what are they like like what are they like not even but he did his thing i was obsessed yeah. with that song when I, i'm still obsessed with it but like when i first heard it i was like replay 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 <laughs> loved it to death but yeah it was like kind of our idea we we're like who would, who would who would get on this like we're like I'm like, Quelle Chris. I think we both thought that. And I'm like, oh my God. I, I love Quelle Chris, so. Yeah, pretty, same. So yeah. amazing that he's on it. Also want to highlight that he's also like a really good person, too. Yeah. Sweetheart. Yeah, like I've heard that. Yeah, person to be Such about. a great person, yeah. Yeah, I echo your sentiments. I love his verse on this project. Um, His flow functions as a rhythm on its own but also right. matches the energy of the song's beat it's crazy yeah. like when he came on and i heard it for the first time i was like damn yo i like and you're right not everybody can do that right yeah very seasoned very seasoned yes yeah such a great rapper great flows everything. yeah i wanted to dig into some of the lyrics on rotation and masai please correct me if i'm wrong so in the song you say the sun goes up and comes down and you repeat this four times mm -hmm. and you go on to say it's gravity, it's agony and belief, it's grief and joy, it's war, tragedy and peace. It's needed for the equilibrium. Imagine the delirium spinning with the earth as a shared object, but feeling the qualities of a human conscious. We spirit it. The spectrum of feeling is never ending. It's forever bending. We forever mending. Yeah. When I heard this, it reminded me of something that Toni Morrison once said. And, and y'all probably know where I'm going. It It's not possible to constantly hold on to crisis. You have to have the love and you have to have the magic. That's also life. 
I think Masai, your lyrics really speak to this balance. And it's not one that's easy to maintain, especially considering what's been going on in the world. So a question for you both, how has your art helped you do this? Mm, That's a good question. I think that like balance is something that, you know, we're all constantly dancing with. And um, it does, it's like a, it's kind of a harsh acceptance when you figure out that like life is ultimately going, there's going to be good and there's going to be bad that comes with it. Like they don't exist without the other. Yeah. And really using those dark times and those, you know, the lows to make the the highs better and to like really learn from it. And I think that like specifically through art, at least what I feel like as a rapper, I think that like choosing to be a rapper, I feel like I did it. I chose to dedicate myself to like being like perpetually like growing and like being a better person and like being able to like really like go through that within my music and like really speak about those things and like get better. Like I feel like each time that I get better at rapping, I'm getting better at being a person because like Mm -hmm. I have more things to say. So does that answer? I mean, yeah. 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 That was a great answer. (laughs) What about you, J words? Well, I feel like, um, like with this album in particular too, like, you know, there's the seriousness of like going through it, right? Like we're going through it. But there's also that element of dance, you know, electronic and fun, you know what I mean? Like we're able to have fun and we're able to go to the club with our friends and have a fun time, even though we're going through you know, a heartbreak or like, you know, going through some life crisis or whatever you know there's still space to have fun and you know not not it's not all the time that we have to feel like the pressure of the world all the time you know we could alleviate ourselves and go have fun smoke a joint take a bath you know what i mean like and yeah i feel the same way with like masai i feel like my production is getting better and that makes me feel like i'm growing as a person and becoming just the person that i really want to be you know so yeah. yeah That's a great answer, too. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. I think it's time for Equimini. Are we ready? Yeah. It's a reality. You mad at me? Boy, how you gonna holler me? You want me to lollygag and talk that bullshit? I refuse to play, so I'm gonna speak that southern good shit. That harder than your hood shit. Little shit that make y'all niggas think about the trigger before you pull it. On liquor stores and make some folks got more than enough bullets to put that ass off in the swing. Don't claim no game. We the niggas that did that ain't no thing with a chicken wing, but still dope. How you gonna play a nigga like Dildo? We outcast till it's over. Barbecue and never meal dope. For real, bro. Every episode, we spend the second half of the episode talking about an album chosen by our guests. It's an album that they love for a particular reason. Maybe they grew up with it. Maybe it's significant to them for another reason. And so tonight we're talking about Equimini by Outkast. So uh, I'm curious, what makes this Outkast album stand above the rest? Hmm. Um, well, (laughs) for the first, uh, for like, for number one, I guess, um, Equimini, I'm an Aquarius and Messiah is a Gemini. So, um, we relate to it a lot um to the name also in like the name songs like there's a song called synthesizer you know there's a song called the art of storytelling and i'm a synthesizer head and besides a storyteller head so it's just like wow mm. like this is just like the perfect you know album you know we're like the second outcast even i'm just gonna say <laughs> well, i hear some influence no we actually yeah. we we do actually like bring this up often like we yeah 
<laughs> we I were like, we're like, we should do like a tribute album to them, you know, or something, you know, like mm -hmm. that'd be yeah. sick. And you know what's so crazy that Andre Three Thousand dropped his flute album the same day we dropped our album. So. He I did. Know. I forgot about that. Yeah. He did. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're aligned with him. He's yeah. gonna Man. be like, he's gonna be like, damn, y'all sick. <laughs> <laughs> Manifested. Right. <laughs> yeah. Feel, I, yeah. I go ahead, myself. Wrap that up. Um perfectly jen because those are right. the things that i was gonna say too right. like, there's just a lot of <laughs> themes <laughs> there's a lot of themes on there that i think just like really resonate with our like artistic practice as a duo and so it's really cool i can't necessarily like i won't say that this is my favorite outcast album right. but i do think it, mm. it it's special what is your favorite I don't fully know if I have a favorite. I might say, I might say like speaker box of below might have been like played a little bit more by me. Um, but honestly, I don't know if I have a favorite Outcast album. Like hmm. you, you were saying the other day that you like the Love Below better. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, put you on the blast. <laughs> You're like, I love the, boy, I love the Gemini. Boy, you did that too. If Big Boy sees this, you did that also. <laughs> <laughs> it might have just been that day, though. You know, like different day, different favorite Outcast album. Right, that's true. I love that. You know, because you know, every day is a different day. Right. You yeah. Feel the same way as you did yesterday. Exactly. Facts. Right. Yeah. What would you say makes Equimini special? Um. Well, I think all of those reasons that Jen just said, like in terms of our relationship to it as a duo, um, just like those themes like really resonating with us. Right. Um, yeah, I think that the process that they probably took to like create the album and like come up with the name, come up with the whole, like all of the themes, I think it might've been like a similar process that we took in coming up with our duo. Mm -hmm. Like right. our duo's name is Air, which is literally just based on the fact that we're air signs uh, we're air signs and like i don't know just like the quality of like really analyzing things and um just like the deep like introspective things and then all of the there's a lot of in this in equimini there's a lot of like you said there's a song named synthesizer there's like mm -hmm. a couple of times that like gear is like outright like mentioned in the project too so, hmm. so it's like it's like interesting hmm. yeah hmm. they have like a song called liberation as well and we're all about you know i have a personal album called sonic liberation you know so um i feel like what they did back in 1998 they were you know they did it for us specifically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the future right they did it for the future for people like us and yeah. you know and we're doing it for you know future you know people that get inspired yeah. by our work you know so hopefully there's another aquarius gemini duel in the future that gets inspired by us you know mm -hmm. you'll yeah. be their outcast right <laughs> <laughs> i think one of the things we were talking about this a little bit before y'all joined us but i think one of the things that i always appreciated about outcast is that and i'm gonna try to explain this in an intelligent way like for me i was a sophomore in high school when this album came out and I feel like back then and I think this is somewhat true now but if you didn't fit as a black person if you didn't fit in a certain box then you were criticized by the community right like people sort of looked at you strangely and I think that was something that people did with outcast not everybody but I I remember people calling the weird when I was in school and stuff mm. and they made it okay to be to function outside of that box that's something that I always really admired about them both in their sound their fashion just their approach in general I just I just think that was so valuable for me to see as a teenager and I'm sure other people as well I think there's a lot of people have been influenced by Outkast a lot of artists that have been influenced by Outkast and I would imagine it some of it has to do with that Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. They like weren't about being in a box. Um, and it's really cool to see. And it's especially cool to see when 
these are just like people from the hood like yeah they're not like these ivy league you know mm -hmm. uh i don't know people who like grew up on the the outskirts of what like might have grown up in predominantly like white neighborhoods or any of those things and i mean obviously not to say anything about those people but it's like okay. really cool as someone who also grew up in the hood like just seeing people be out the box and like express themselves in this way and it doesn't yeah. they don't lose their street cred for it you know right right yeah. they don't yeah and that's cool <laughs> yeah that's so true like they are still respected by everybody in the hood even though <laughs> andre got on this blonde wig and <laughs> got these <laughs> these leather pants and you know like people still had mad respect for them and mm -hmm. i always really I, I love that so much i appreciate it so much yeah goats do you think that has anything to do between the like relationship between the two of them like andre kind of being out and left field like doing all kinds of weird stuff puffy boots blonde wig big boy <laughs> being big boy like still rocking with andre yeah i feel like yeah, I feel like Andre's like a little bit more out there yeah. than Big yeah. Boy, but I feel like Big Boy was with it though. Yeah. 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 Like I got you, dog. I'm gonna be sticking right by your side. Right. Right. <laughs> like it's like you need like an like you need that like that duel, like it sounds like it works because it's like here he could do whatever he wants and it's like you have somebody that's gonna be there with you regardless and shit, you know. Like right. and be and match your energy in their own way, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thing is super cool to see. I also think too it could be because I mean, Andre was still talking about some hard ass shit. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't it didn't matter what he was wearing. Like he was still talking about some hard ass shit, talking about being from the hood, and so I think that in itself was also something that people respected. Well, there's you know there's some commentary about that on this album. They opened the album with Return of the G, where yeah, you know he's speaking to that like. Yeah. Yeah. People criticizing him for getting too weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah. It's like, nah. It's like, uh, I can do this yeah. too. Exactly. Niggas always be hollering peace. You know what I'm saying? Peace, my brother. Peace, this. Peace, that. You know what I'm saying? But every time I, I uh, try to get a peace of mind, niggas try to get a peace of mind. So I got to grab my peace. It's the return of the gangster, thanks to them niggas that's on that blow that run up in your crib, which contains your lady and an eight month old child to raise. Plus, you true blue about this music, but they do not want to hear it because they'd rather be bouncing and shooting and killing and bouncing and shit. Get down. Return of the gangster, thanks to them niggas that think y'all soft and say y'all be gospel rapping, but they be steady clapping when you talk about bitches and switches and hoes and clothes and weed. Let's talk about time traveling, round javelin, something mind unraveling. Get down. Return of the gangster, thanks to them niggas that got them kids, they got enough to buy ounce, but not enough to bounce them kids to the do it to the park so they grow up in the dark never seeing light so they end up being like your star ass robbing niggas in broad ass they like get down return of the gangster thanks to the niggas who get the wrong impression of expression then the question is big boy what's up with andre is he in the coat is he on drugs is he gay when y'all gonna break up when y'all gonna wake up nigga i'm feeling better than ever what's wrong with you you get down When I heard that y'all picked Equemini, the first thing I thought of was the track Synthesizer. Mm -hmm. um, just because of the sonic qualities of that track, the the way they use synthesizers and digital sounds sort of sound otherworldly in a way that, J Words, I think some of your production does too. Was it at all influential on, on you and like how you approach making music? Um, The song specifically, the song? Yeah. Not really, I guess. Uh, I heard it when I was young, you know, and then followed up when I was older again. Um, it was cool to see, you know, that they were like, they did use a synthesizer in that way. I didn't get influenced um, by this song, you know, but it's just, you know, it makes me feel like it's okay to be weird. Like, I, when I first started making beats, um, I was in a band, I was playing piano, you know, and when I found out about synthesizers, I felt like, I could finally make music without having to worry about theory or about worry about like mm -hmm. being good at playing piano. It's just like, I could just make some cool sounds. And I think that's all I ever needed, you know, like make some cool sounds, make some cool drums, put those two together. You know, you have a song, you don't have to be a theory, like musical legend or 
read notes and la la you know i didn't know how to get into that so i was just like yeah synthesizer is cool like the like sequence stuff you know like i don't have to be good at this you know and that's my favorite part about being a producer because <laughs> <laughs> um when i was younger i guess like my, the drummer that was in my band he was very like anal about um me learning the right way to play piano you know so when I found synthesizer, it was like, oh, fuck you. I could just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you know, like, what the hell? Do you, yeah. Yeah, like, I would never, like, make somebody feel bad for not knowing theory or anything yeah. like that. Like, yeah. express yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. How old were you all when you discovered this album, when you first heard it? Hmm. Like I feel like, yeah, I feel like for me, like, I'm sure this album came out in... The 98 98 yeah. yeah yeah like i'm sure i heard it like with like my mom like playing around the house but i feel like in high school is when i really like revisited a lot of like outcasts because like andre like is like one of my favorite rappers so like mm. it's when i really like revisited the disc this discographies so i think that's when i probably like first appreciated it for real like in high yeah school. me too in high school i was like super i was like a music nerd like i was like on my music tip like, I was, like <laughs> you don't know this album <laughs> that's that was me i was the gatekeeper i was such a gatekeeper it was so <laughs> crazy i'm the but yeah in high school i was yeah on my super music nerd shit and found this album and i was like what the hell this is incredible mm. yeah and at that time i wasn't really making music or anything like that so i was just listening to it it's crazy when you start making music it's like damn you stop listening to music a lot mm. unless you start mm. djing it's weird i started djing and then i started listening to music again and i'm like whoa cool <laughs> 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 yeah it's crazy <laughs> masai what do you appreciate most about three stacks as a rapper there's so much to appreciate honestly like i think like he's one of the most well-rounded rappers like when it comes to the things that you judge rappers on being good at i think that he's really good at all aspects of rapping like he has really like incredible flows he has so much like witty you know like wordplay um he's a great storyteller he has like the charisma and dynamic in his delivery i think he's just good at so much of it but um yeah really really a great storyteller um mm -hmm. andre a great yeah. communicator in general and his flows like his flows are just wild um but yeah he has so many like epic like even i don't know like where he's like and i gotta grab my piece there's just like so many yeah he's like a character yeah he's like it's like listening to a cartoon like in your ears <laughs> <laughs> That he created a character for himself, you know? Mm -hmm. Masai, are you talking about him, like, using a word that has multiple definitions or can be? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a homophone, right? Uh, homophone? Or is it a homonym? 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 Oh, yeah, Maybe it's a homonym. My grammar teachers would be unhappy with me, but. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things. But either way, he's just an excellent, like, writer, excellent storyteller, um, and I do think that storytelling is like kind of a lost art form these days. Like it still definitely happens, mm -hmm. but I don't think that people are storytelling in, I think it, it kind of got outdated like mm -hmm. in a way, but I think that he always does it in a way that's so, so smooth and like still feels good. And like, um, it's just great. Yeah. And he does a lot of that on this album too, on Equipment Night. There's so much storytelling yeah i mean literally there's two songs <laughs> called the artist storytelling yeah, right yeah. He literally just like telling stories mm -hmm. um especially the first part um part one yeah yeah part one yeah that that was the song i would send to people like yo this is why you should listen to to outcast right. like, this song mm -hmm. here. Yeah. nice yeah i think what you're talking about the things you're naming about three thousand like I'm thinking about what we just said about Quelle Chris on Down Down BB. Yeah. Like I think yeah. like he can do the same thing. Right. Like this this talent of like 
making your flow like like a separate beat in the song like it's just it's crazy how he can do that it's, i always felt that way yeah. too with quelle especially with the album about um self-love what's the name of it um oh, always forget the name but um love, i know what you're talking about me. yeah yeah that one yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i felt with that specific album like quelle um like uses his voice in a certain way that made him like a character you know of his own story like it's like yeah damn. and like seeing him perform live and see him doing that live was crazy like in action he, even the way he talks he's like talking like that like he's like crazy he's like his voice just goes up and down and stuff you know <laughs> <laughs> so sick <laughs> yeah yeah. So then I think Three Stacks can hop on a J Words beat then. I think so. Definitely. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think though. That. That'll be sick. Y'all tune. Oof. Man, look, we manifest in that. Yeah, manifest yeah. it. Yeah. I think it will happen. Like, first of all, he like had our some of our friends on his album. So I'm like, that's not kind of crazy far off, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. I think it's possible. <laughs> I think it's hopefully very he don't quit rapping for real right, right. well I hope, yeah. I hope i hope he listened to headspace and was like wait <laughs> let me get back on let me get, let back, me get on. back on <laughs> let me get back on this <laughs> i got that'll be the album to do it yeah right especially that i dropped that same day i'm pretty sure he probably even took a glimpse at it or something you know he had to he had to <laughs> i can't remember the reasons he gave for not he said something about like not wanting to rap anymore because he feel like he doesn't have anything to rap about. Is that what he said? In that mm -hmm. way, in that way, I remember him saying something like, "He he didn't have anything to say like that fit that mode of storytelling." I don't, those are Got not it. his words. Mm. That's my interpretation of what he was saying. Yes, mm. something along those lines. People yeah. did not like that answer. I, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, think I, I was kind of like, "What?" So hip hop has its limits in that regard, like right. But also, I feel like him as a person, like he should be able, be okay to do even like whatever form of art that sure. comes out of him. Right. You know what right. I mean? Like I don't think him yeah. explaining to everybody why he's not rapping. I think he didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? No, you don't owe anybody an explanation at all. You know, and one day you never know. Every day is different, like we said before. So sure. one day he might wake up and be like, "I'm a rap today." I'm like, you never know. <laughs> I, I did appreciate the, the disclaimer though, as a consumer, him being real upfront, like there are no bars on this album. Yeah. No, like, no bars. Yeah, so be be aware of what you are purchasing. I appreciated that. Right. right. Yeah, there's a lot of transparency there because I think he knew. Mm -hmm. I think he knew that people what people wanted, and he was like, "I'm not giving it to you. Sorry." Yeah. Right. I do want so bad though a, a rap album. I know. Today. I I know. And also, like, yeah. I don't think that shit. I'm going to be I'm going to be rapping when I'm 60. I don't yeah, I hope so. I'm going to be making beats when I'm 60. I'm I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> There's no age limit. Right. Like, at all. Things never. Keeps going. Yeah. You just keeps have going. more wisdom to give and mm -hmm. like right. I agree. I agree. I think that's what the criticism. Sorry, bro. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if it coincides, coincides with your growth, right? And you never stop growing, then right. you know. Exactly. I think that's what the criticism was. People were like, what do you mean you don't have anything to talk about? Now's the perfect time to rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully One day. blesses us with and but I love I love that for him that it's just so unexpected and that he just does yeah. whatever he wants to do. And I think that's also that's also been a core part of who he is as an artist. Like he's gonna do the next thing that nobody expects him to do. Like yeah. he was singing so much in like uh, what's the album with like prototype and mm, love, love, I love it. oh that is love yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he was singing so much in that album and like they sang a lot actually in a lot mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. a lot of the albums it was, not, yeah. it was not typical rap music at all so yeah it's expected of him to just do some completely different shit i feel that's why we love him right love him. right <laughs> love that for him do you king <laughs> <laughs> just get on the jaywords beats in the future <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna yeah. put that out there we're gonna tweet yeah. it we're gonna yeah, manifest it, it. Yeah. we're gonna we're gonna throw some words in the fire so it lifts up <laughs> we're gonna do it all yeah because right. because he needs to be that needs to happen i need it to yeah. happen that'd be so yeah. sick <laughs> y'all this has been an amazing conversation thank you for your time 
Um, thank you for the conversation around Equimini and thank you for Headspace and all that you do. Mm-hmm. Beautiful project for folks who have not heard it yet. You are really missing out. Please tap in. That includes you, Andre 3000. Um, <laughs> but before we go, is there anything that y'all want folks to know? Um, any upcoming performances or, or other things that you have in the works? Um, we're performing live January 26, 2024. Uh Knitting Factory in Manhattan with Akai Solo and Dean Spencer. Mm. I think I'm great. going to that. Yeah. Yeah. Pull up, pull up. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a fun time. Everybody's about to go up. Very unique lineup and things yes. are all so different, but all so fire. It's about to be yeah. a really good time. Yeah. Looking forward to it's that. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Some exciting stuff this year. You know, just stay tuned. Can't wait for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, thank y'all both. Yeah. Yeah. Thank y'all both again. We appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you guys for having us. Of course. Of course. This has been The Next Movement. Thanks for listening. Peace, y'all. Peace. Backwards, words, words, words. How you moving?